Hey everyone, Scott here from Stiff Upper Lens and today I'm going to talk to you about the 6D Mark II and why Canon has not put 4K dual card slots etc into this camera. So the announcement came out pretty early this morning in Britain, I was asleep. The 6D Mark II is out, uh, or is gonna be coming out. It's officially announced, there's been tons of leaks, but now it's confirmed. And it's gonna be a 26 megapixel camera, 45 point all cross type AF system from the ATD. Full HD 60p video recording, but with dual pixel AF and a variable angle touchscreen, an articulating touchscreen, which is fantastic. I've seen quite a lot of videos going around on the internet, uh, on YouTube thus far, mainly talking down this camera. And to a certain extent that is true, this is kind of a full frame ATD. And to kind of delve into exactly why Canon has done this, you need to understand the market position of the 6D. The 6D Mark I was launched after the 5D Mark III, and it was very similar to what the 5D Mark II was. But uh, effectively what it does is it bridges the gap between prosumer, consumer, enthusiasts that want a full frame camera but don't want to pay three and a half grand for a 5D Mark III or six grand for a 1DX Mark II. They want full frame because they want to manipulate depth of field better than they can with their APS-C camera. Uh, they want better low light performance although that gap is obviously bridging and various other things that you, you get with full frame. You want to use the better quality full frame lenses uh, that are generally available, of, co of course, with the Sigma 50 to 100, 1.8 and 18 to 35. Again, that's kind of somewhat been distorted. So the 6D Mark II, the reason the 6D Mark II is positioned as it is, is of course they don't want to be cannibalizing sales from the 5D Mark IV. I've got a couple of small points that I've got here. So single card slot again. Of course, this is a consumer camera, a prosumer camera, and could be a viable backup body for someone at a wedding. This is, if this camera would have had dual card slots, I probably would have got it uh, instead of my Sony a7 II. 26 megapixels versus 30 on the 5D Mark IV. It's actually got a higher resolution than the 5D Mark III, and I'm sure that with that Digic 7 processor, the images uh, in relatively higher ISOs are probably going to look slightly better than the 5D Mark III. Of course, we're dealing with sort of four or five years newer tech than previously. There is no 4K, no headphone jack, and the shutter speed is limited to 1 4,000th of a second. The reason they've done this, of course, no 4K. I would like to have seen this, I must admit, filtering down from the 1DX Mark II to the 5D Mark IV, but this camera isn't going to be angled at serious videographers. If you're a serious videographer, Canon really wants you to buy the 5D Mark IV, the 1DX Mark II, or one of their cinema line. They've made that quite clear, particularly with the crop factor on the 5D Mark IV. I think the technology involved getting a 4K image from the 6D Mark II is just going to put so much production costs on this camera, and the idea is that this is a cheaper camera. No headphone jack. Again, you know, the same as before, they want to push you towards one of those cinema lines. I think a lot of videographers bought the 6D and really enjoyed it. So those that did that may consider still buying this if 1080p is going to be enough for what you're doing. A lot of people are still delivering in 1080p. They like to shoot in 4K and perhaps crop down. So one four thousandth of a second max shutter speed. It's going to matter to some people that like to shoot at 1.8 in super super bright conditions. It's not going to make a big difference to a lot of people. If they'd have made this dual card slots, I think they'd have cannibalized a lot of photographers that are buying the 5D Mark IV for weddings and other professional work because it's a lighter body and still very, very capable. The 6D Mark I image quality is still fantastic, particularly with an articulating touchscreen and dual pixel AF. A lot of people that videographers and other photographers doing different angled work would possibly have bought this instead of a 5D Mark IV. And you've got to consider this is obviously reasonably cheaper than a 5D Mark IV and Canon needs to keep people in those different spaces to retain their customers and give people a logical upgrade. Canon don't want 5D Mark III owners going out and buying 
a 6D Mark II, they want you to buy a 5D Mark IV. I actually think overall the specs of this camera for today are not bad. The thing you need to consider with a DSLR like this, which has a product life cycle of three to four years, is that once we're in 2020, 2021, although you may not be thinking about shooting video now, you may in the future, Personally, I couldn't justify dropping two grand on something that doesn't have 4K. It's kind of people saying, you know, still people who don't have 4K TVs, don't have 4K monitors and this kind of stuff. They will. They will eventually have this. People will want to consume 4K content. The same as people now when they go onto YouTube don't want to see 720p content. They want to see 1080p content and 1440p 4K. You know, retina disc displays are becoming more and more common. 4K screens are becoming common in laptops. Even tablets are starting to get resolutions and phones in excess of 1080p. Huge plus points of this camera is it now has a reasonably capable autofocus system. A dual pixel AF is going to be great. People that are vlogging probably don't care at this point about 4K. If they do, they're probably going to go out and buy maybe a Sony A7S II, an A7R II, a GH5, a G85, uh, maybe the Olympus, the new Olympus OEM. Um, there's kind of so many different options now. The issue is, I, I suppose, for Canon is this camera in a year or two is already going to seem very very dated i do believe that with this announcement of them holding a lot of things back that we may be seeing a full frame mirrorless coming onto the scene very shortly you've got the atd and you've got the m6 they're pretty similar cameras uh, i don't know what they'd call a full frame mirrorless camera because the m numbering system perhaps wouldn't mirror uh, but who knows so positive points about this camera i think this is going to be very good for a consumer who is looking to move into full frame um, and they don't want to commit to the kind of level of the 5D Mark IV, but they want their creature comforts of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, touchscreen, these kind of things that are just common in our everyday devices, in our phones, in some of our laptops. I would personally go with a used 5D Mark III and save quite a lot of money, but of course people like new stuff and they want stuff that is new tech and as I say you know the ISO performance of this is probably going to be better and the dual pixel AF is maybe a deal breaker for some people. For the time being I personally won't be buying this camera I think it will sell very very well still. When you make an investment of something like a 5D Mark IV it's something that is a professional tool you're going to be earning that money back through work. With a 6D Mark II as a consumer prosumer camera if you're buying it as just someone who wants to move up to full frame that £2,000 three or whatever thousand dollars whatever however it's priced in the states if you're a consumer is going to be difficult to justify for what is effectively a full frame ATD the difference between full frame and APS is narrowing and I think you need to consider whether upgrading to this body would significantly improve your images or whether additional lenses, lighting or a plane ticket somewhere nice might be a better option for you. Hope you found that interesting and helpful. If you did, please give the video a like, a thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button. I posted my thoughts on this over on, on Facebook, so you can click a link below and go and view that. I still think it's gonna be a great camera, and another great thing about this is if you want an even more budget-friendly to upgrade, a way to upgrade to full frame now, the 6D Mark I is obviously gonna plummet in price, so maybe you could pick up a use one of those. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.